What's going on everybody? I'm Primal Liquid bringing you guys another guide for Star Ocean the Divine Force and this one is going to be pretty much an all-inclusive guide based on item creation aka crafting and synthesis. In this video we're going to be going over everything from how to unlock the initial item creation to everything you can do at post game and then everything in between as well the main goal is i'm going to teach you guys everything there is to know about item creation so let's start shall we so first of all item creation can be unlocked very very early as soon as you get to the seaport of riffle now, while there, during the actual story segment of the game, you will have a cutscene with Welch where you will pick up one of her rings. Once you pick up that ring, you then have to deliver it to her in Dalric Village. Her house is the one up near the mine with the uh, giant pointing finger. Just go in there and she will start a series of quests with you. And that also unlocks the first bit of item creation that you actually get, aka compounding. From that point on, throughout the game, she will randomly call you and ask you to go and visit her where she will give you another quest and once you complete that quest you unlock the next item creation ability so for example you start with compounding and then you unlock crafting smithery engineering alchemy authoring and finally synthesis all of Welch's quests do typically ten, uh, are typically uh, fetch quests. However, a lot of the times, the items can actually just be bought from stores as well. Now, since we've explained how to unlock item creation, let's talk about the things we can do with item creation. Also, I will say item creation is very, very broken and can be abused very, very early in the game if you are early in the game you are going to need a lot of fall though so i suggest using compounding with any character doesn't really doesn't really matter with compounding and you want to combine fresh sage and blueberries the reason for that is you can actually make the resurrection elixir which only costs 166 fall to make including buying the materials and it sells for 400 fall giving you a profit of about 300 thousand per hour that's only for early game though obviously as you get to late game there are better things to uh, to do in order to earn fall but this is a nice boost early on if you want to really start ramping up on your item creation and get some overpowered stuff now when it comes to item creation there are obviously eight main characters that you can use and then there is also a ninth optional character the ninth optional character does depend on who you chose as a main character i chose raymond so my optional character is jj if you chose letitia at the very start your optional character will be uh, theo now they start off with zero talents and you do have to unlock them we're still trying to piece out uh, which talents jj and Fio can unlock but one thing that we do seem to have noticed well this is me and quite a few others over on game faq so are testing a bunch of this stuff is not everybody can unlock every talent okay not everybody can unlock every talent there are also some characters better at some things as opposed to others for example if we look at alchemy right now as you can see we have five characters capable of doing alchemy however even though uh, they most of them have wild instinct which makes it possible to produce a rare item during alchemy for some reason, Albert is the only one who can seem to craft a Philosopher's Stone. And so because of that, we ended up looking into other ways. And it does unfortunately seem that some characters have unique crafts available to them. So when it comes to weapons, each character can only craft their own ultimate weapons. Uh, Midas, for example, uh, is the only one who can craft the ultimate heavy armor. Malkia is the only one who can craft the ultimate light armor and so on and so forth. Now, 
when it comes to actual item creation, you can typically ignore the talent for the most part. There are a few things I recommend doing though. And that is actually leveling your item creation skills because this does a few different things. So, first of all, there are two ways that you can level your skills. You can either do it via SP, doing the uh, IC skill. However, just be warned, if you do level your synthesis and item creation skills using SP this way, you will not be able to max out everything on that character. AKA, if you want to complete the skill tree, max all passive skills, all active skills, and all combat skills to their maximum level, you cannot use a single point of SP in item creation skills. Which means the only other way to level them is to mass synthesis, okay? Which you might think takes a very, very long time, Honestly, it's not that bad for the majority of these. The only one that's a real pain in the arse to level that way is actual synthesis, which is just for moving factors anyway. That is the most annoying one. However, the others, they can be done incredibly, incredibly easy, especially as you get later on in the game, and you can start using the fall trick to just mass buy materials. But getting level 10 on some of these is very, very important, okay? Namely... Namely, you want level 10 Smithery for Raymond and level 10 Synthesis. Now, every character needs level 10 Synthesis because each character can only synthesize factors on equipment they can equip. Meaning, if you want to synthesize factors across, you know, each character's ultimate weapon, they themselves have to do it, meaning every character needs level 10 Synthesis. As for Smithery, you need that for Raymond to craft his ultimate weapon. You don't really need anything else, but if you are going for the all item creation trophy, you are still going to need to do that in Orthering as well, because he, do ha he does have some unique books. All characters do have some unique books, which you will need level 10 for as well. But again, that's only if you're going for the actual all crafting trophy. If you just want the gear, then Smithery and Synthesis for Raymond. When it comes to other characters, specifically for Smithery, you don't actually need to level all characters for that. You actually only need to level a couple of them. So, when it comes to actually Smithery, you can use it with all nine characters. But, as I mentioned, you only need to level Raymond in Smithery. You need Letitia leveled in Smithery as well, simply due to the fact... Her best weapon comes from that too, which means she needs to craft that. You need JJ with level 10 Smithery, as his second best weapon comes from that. His actual best weapon is bought from Santa in Ultima Fuel. However, he does have some very good crafts that are unique to him only, which you can use to farm guaranteed factors. Okay, you can get a guaranteed 55% damage to divinity on one of his weapons by using the Philosopher Stone or the Exolithium Crystals. You can also get a guaranteed weapon factor 48% from his second best sword using the Philosopher Stone from him. But again, his actual ultimate weapon is just bought. Unfortunately, not all the best weapons in the game are crafted. Some of them, they are just bought. Now... When it comes to Midas, you want him to be leveled as well because he can create the best heavy armor in the game, which is highly worthwhile getting. And then finally for Smithery, you want to level Malkia because she creates the best light armor in the game. Again, both using Philosopher's Stones. So out of all these characters, you only actually need technically Four level to level 10, which is Raymond, Letitia, Midas, and Malkia, in order to get their final equipment. However, if you want to get some easy guaranteed factors, do JJ as well, because it does just make life easier. So, let's move on to the next one, which is engineering. Engineering is sort of a mix between compounding, smithery, and crafting. Unfortunately, it's rather useless to be honest, there's, there's really not much you can actually do with this. The only thing I would suggest doing for 
engineering is simply getting the ultimate weapons for good old Elena and Marielle. So if you want to get Elena's ultimate weapon, then you need to fuse, oh, I don't actually have any, um, but you need to fuse two integration devices. You can get integration devices by buying them from Santa in Ultima Fuel. There are a few mobs that drop them, however, I have not been able to find those mobs again, so I think they were one-time only mobs part of a boss battle. But again, you can buy them from Santa in Ultima Fuel. And then, likewise, you do the same with Marielle. So if you want Marielle's best weapon, it is just two of the um, integration devices fused together. And that will also allow you to get her best weapon. But again, they do need both to have engineering at level 10. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move on to crafting, shall we? Now, when it comes to crafting, honestly, there's not a huge amount that we can really do here, okay? Mainly due to the fact that, unfortunately, when it comes to the actual best weapons here, the only one we can really get is Midas. There are a couple of us, but Midas is definitely the best one we can get from that. So he needs level 10 and you need a Philosopher's Stone to get his best weapon. The other best weapon we can get is Malkia, which again is a Philosopher's Stone. Unfortunately, hers isn't really that amazing, to be honest. Um, it is generally just kind of weak in power and Malkia herself isn't that overpowered. But again, if you want to get the best weapons on everybody, that is how you get hers. And then finally, we can actually get a pretty decent armor. It does have more defense, and well, it does have more guts than the uh, the armor that Malkia can create with Smithery. However, it does have less defense, and it also has less intelligence. It has no intelligence at all. But if you want to craft that, then you just need to use either Nina or Albert. And in order to get that, you need the runic cloth, which I also don't actually have one of. It, look, I went through just crafting a bunch of factors, so I'm low on materials, okay? But yeah, if you want the technically second best set of light armor, then again, it's Nina and Albert. Okay. So with that, I've just gone over the most important creations. But let's talk about something that I think a lot of people are probably going to be struggling with. And that is how do you get all of the factors? So if we look at synthesis right oh excuse me, if we look at synthesis right now, obviously, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of factors in the game. And you are going to need a lot of them for a whole bunch of different equipment, whether that's making EXP gear, whether it's making, you know, fall farming gear, drop rate gear, or just batshit insane damage gear. There are multiple ways to get this, okay? Multiple, multiple ways. So firstly, some pieces of equipment do have guaranteed factors on them. You can either craft them or you can either buy them from stores. I personally don't like this method because I think it takes forever unless you know what you are exactly going for. For example, JJ's last three weapons are all very good abilities. So using him is pretty much a guaranteed way of getting factors. By which I mean, you know, using smithery to craft them. However, if you just want to get some generic factors and things like that, what I would suggest doing is firstly teleporting over to Paladernia and just going to the normal Paladernia, okay? The reason why I suggest going over to Paladernia is the shop here, this woman right here, will actually sell every base material bar the high-end ones the good news though right is the materials this woman does not sell are sold by santa in ultima fuel which means if you buy 20 of everything from her and then 20 of everything nice. from santa you have 20 of every crafting material in the game okay so for the majority this is what you want to do and then 
once you have all of your materials, you're just going to go into item creation. We're going to go to crafting and we are going to use Letitia. Look at how many crafts I've carried out with Letitia, okay? The main reason for this is she has nimble fingers. Makes it possible to produce a rare item during crafting and it also becomes easier to add a good factor. So what this means is whenever Letitia crafts an item, so if I just, you know, do a few crafts right now, whenever Letitia does a craft, you're going to craft, you're going to craft something, and then that item is going to have a bunch of factors on. Now what I do when I go for trying to mass produce factors, I will just sit here mashing X, basically, and I'll just produce item after item after item after item, and then eventually I'll end up with about four, 500 items, all with factors on. So then I just load up a store, doesn't matter what store, just any store. I'll load up a store and I will go to the sell command. So when she finally stops moving, there we go. So I'll just go to the sell command. I'll go to weapons first of all, and then I'll just go up the list, pressing triangle on an item I don't want to sell so we can bulk sell the items. So for example, like there's no, there's no effects here that I want to keep, so I would sell them. Again, nothing I would want to sell, uh, sorry, nothing I would want to keep. And you just go through until you find something you want to keep, like this uh, Traffia Knuckles right here. That has 210% drop rate, so I would want to keep that. So I would end up just skipping that and moving on to the next item, basically. Uh, projectiles homing ability plus added to some projectiles. That's a pretty good ability, so I would want to keep that. And again, we just skip that. And then basically, I just go through getting rid of all the items with factors on that I don't want. Once we have all of those items selected, I just sell them. And then I go back, buy a bunch more items and do more crafting. And eventually, I will get all of the factors I need. But they will be spread out across multiple different pieces of gear. This is where we are going to use Synthesis. Now, all Synthesis does is it basically merges factors across equipment. And as I mentioned, when you are using Synthesis, the only items you can synthesize are the ones that that character can equip. Okay, sorry about that, everybody. I just had a phone call. So, where were we? Okay, so when it comes to synthesis, the character that you use it on can only synthesize factors between equipment they themselves can equip. So, for example, Nina cannot equip heavy armor. So if we choose her base factor right now, there is going to be no heavy armor there. As you can see, it is just like cloth armor and light armor, basically. So what we are going to do, and this is pretty much the easiest way I've found, as you can just use Malkia for everything, and yes, she is the best at Synthesis, by the way. Uh, she has the highest chance to move good traits across. We're going to use Malkia, and we're going to use a base cheap item to put the uh, uh, to put the factors on that we want to keep. So what I typically tend to do is I just use a power ring because every character can equip power rings and then we use that to transfer the factors across to the piece of gear that we want. So right now I've got a power ring there. Obviously it already has a factor on and then what I would do is I would choose the second item which has the factors on that I want to move. So for example, right there, there's casting time at 20%. I would want to move that factor across. So what I would do is I would select that. And by the way, because there is one factor there and four on here, that takes us up to five factors, meaning we are going to lose one of these factors, okay? To make sure we don't lose the one that we want, save your game. If you lose the factor that you want, just reload your save and try again. So, once we've got our base item, this is the item that the factor is going to go to. We have the material item, which is where we are going to get the factors from. Also, keep in mind, the item that you use in the material section will be lost after the synthesis. So, we're just going to start right now. And then we are going to select the first option, which is Shuffle Synthesis. So what Shuffle Synthesis does is it takes all those factors and it shuffles them around, basically. And then it will choose four of them. 
So as you can see right now, I have chance of causing 40% fire resistance, casting time, bestows the elements of fire to attacks and 250% item drop rate. That's fine, we're just gonna X out that and we're gonna take that. So now I'm going to find that power ring again, which unfortunately is not that easy because I do have a uh, kind of way too many, there it is. So we're gonna take that and then we're going to choose something else now. We need we need something else with uh, just anything worth using, basically. Although I suppose for the sake of this video, it doesn't really matter. Let, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's go for project homing ability. So we have three abilities. We have three factors there and we have four there. The only difference this time is we have one factor on each piece that we want to keep. Now, unfortunately, there's no guaranteed way of doing this, okay? The way factor movement essentially works is it adds all the factors together and then it will give you a maximum of four of those factors on your piece of equipment. So basically, I'm going to use factor lock now and you get factor lock by leveling the synthesis skill on a character. We're going to press L1 and I'm going to lock casting time. Now, by locking casting time, that means that when we synthesize these two items together, casting time minus 20% is guaranteed to be there, okay? That will never disappear. Unfortunately, you can only lock traits on the base item, and you can only lock a maximum of two of them. But what this effectively does is right now we have a total of seven factors, okay? So rather than taking those seven factors, and giving us four random ones. We're effectively locking one. So we're removing one of those factors from the pool. Casting time, 20% is now removed from that pool. That is guaranteed for us. So now what it's going to do is it's going to take the remaining six non-locked factors. And then it's going to give us like a random three of them. So let's just start the synthesis right now. And again, we are going to use Shuffle Synthesis just to, again, swap them over and that. So right now, I have 20% casting time, 40% chance to use skills without AP, drop rate, and water to attacks. So I didn't get the ability I wanted, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it Try Again. And this is just going to retry the Synthesis for extra fall. And unfortunately, well, ah, actually, I got what I wanted there. So right there, I got the ability I wanted. So I've got casting time 20% and projectiles homing ability added to some projectiles. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of that. So now when we go down to our new power ring, we have two abilities that we want to keep. And this now is where things start getting a little bit annoying and where you're going to have to do more save scumming. So when we synthesize this with something else, we're going to lock both the abilities that we want to keep. And then we're going to, again, just choose any random ability that we want and move it over like that. Once the power ring is complete, once we have all four abilities on that power ring that we want to keep. So let's say, um, I'll tell you what, let's just go to Elena, choose one of her weapons, in fact, no, let's do Marielle, because I think I've got her best weapon. Okay, I don't have Marielle's best weapon yet, unfortunately. I thought I'd already crafted that, but I guess not. Either way, it doesn't matter. Let's use that. So, let's say we want to move the traits from our finished accessory over to the weapon. Make sure you save before this, because it will be expensive. So, we are going to go down, we're going to find the power ring that we made, and this time, rather than using that as a base item, we're going to use it as a material. Notice the fall required, though. When you are using high-end weapons, it is freaking expensive, okay? Really, really, really freaking expensive. So, do, do keep that in mind, yeah? So what we are going to do now is, if we have abilities on there that we uh, that we want to keep, then again, just lock that. However, chances are you want to get rid of them. This is where you are going to need to save and reload a lot. Because what you are going to do now is you are going to start the synthesis, and you are effectively going to have to keep trying again until all four factors over here are chosen out of the, you know, possibly eight factors to go on to the weapon. It is going to take some time, I am afraid to say. But again, that is the unfortunately the only way to do it. Now, you could do it a different way, where you have 
two factors on two different pieces of gear and you try and move them over that way. But personally, I think fall is ridiculously easy to get in the game and I've had pretty good luck so far when it comes to synthesis. So I just put all four factors on one crappy piece of equipment and then I just move them all over that way. Just like I did with um, Raymond's weapon here, getting the attack 17%. Like, I, I just have no real issue getting lucky with that. So that's the way I do it. But again, if you wanted to do it a different way, make two bad items instead and then just synth them over one at a time. But that will be more expensive on the fall. But it is entirely up to you which method you want to do. Now, we've talked about how to get all the best equipment. We've talked about how to get, you know, pretty much all the factors in the game from crafting. We've talked, well, we haven't talked about alchemy. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, and we've talked about synthesis for how to move factors around, okay? Now, one of the things that you can do early on in the game is you can use alchemy. Alchemy is worthwhile pretty much from the minute you unlock it to the very end of the game. What alchemy does is it effectively allows you to take a material and upgrade it, okay? So let me just buy a bunch of... Uh, low level materials from uh, Paladonia. Obviously, once you get to this point where, you know, you have just ridiculous amounts of fall, you are easily able to farm money, then alchemy does lose its effectiveness because you can just buy all of the materials that you need. But when you are not able to afford to just mass buy the high end materials like I am right now, Alchemy is incredibly, incredibly good. It is even better early on because what it will allow you to do is you can upgrade the ores to the next tier. So what that means is right now, as you can see, I'm buying all these different ore type items. Iron, silver, gold, star, ruby, mithril, rune metal, orichalcum, rainbow diamond, dark matter, and moonstone. This is the order they go in. So, for example, we can use alchemy to level up iron. We can turn iron into silver. We can turn silver into gold, star ruby, mithril, rune metal. We can go all the way up. So, once you unlock alchemy, one of the things you can do is you can save your game. You can use alchemy on Albert. He is the best for alchemy. You can use alchemy on Albert and you can start upgrading your materials. If you don't get the upgraded material, just reload your save and go again. And then this way... You could turn Mithril into Rune Metal. You could then turn Rune Metal into Ori Calcum. You could turn Ori Calcum into Rainbow Diamond. You could turn Rainbow Diamond into Dark Matter. Dark Matter into Moonstone. And then, this is where it's going to start really getting expensive as well, by the way. You are going to need to do some form of fall trick to really make this work. You can turn Moonstone into Meteorite. Now, once we get to the last three tiers, notice that jump in fall required. It goes from 2,100 to 28,000. That is because once you get down to these three materials, the equipment that you can create via smithy and crafting is very, very good. Literally minimum in the thousands for stats. Once you get to Philosopher's Stones, that's where you are talking literal post-game equipment, okay? So you can turn Meteorite into Exolithium Crystals. And then finally, you can turn Exolithium Crystals into Philosopher's Stones. And as you can see, it does get expensive each and every time. Meteorite is 28,000 per upgrade attempt. Exolithium Crystal is 48,000. And then Philosopher's Stone is 60,000, which is very, very pricey. But this does mean that when you unlock Alchemy, which if I'm not mistaken... I believe you unlock alchemy sometime around the village of Eda. Might be a little bit after that or a little bit before. I can't really remember the exact point you unlock it. But once you do unlock it, this effectively allows you to get end game equipment. It literally lets you get the best weapons for the majority of characters and the best armor for characters. Okay. You just need the fall to do so. Because once you get your Philosopher's Stones with Albert, you can go into Smithery or you can go into Crafting. And then you can just start crafting the absolute best of the best stuff. So if I use a Philosopher's Stone with JJ right now, 
Let's see if we get lucky. So we didn't get lucky with JJ there, so I'm going to try again. Obviously, this is expensive. Make sure you save, and if you don't get what you want, just reload your save. And again, I didn't get lucky, so we'll try again. And I didn't get lucky. Yeah, so it's just the way it is. So if we want a weapon, let's just use Raymond, because this is pretty easy to get, to be fair. Again, we're just going to use Philosopher's Stone. Again, save and load if you don't get what you want. So that's not his best, unfortunately. Pretty decent trace on it though, but either way, we're going to try again. Again, this is really expensive on the fall. So, if you are late game... Oh, that's actually really good for the resistance. Shame the stats are so weak though, but that could make you immune to pretty much all the statuses in the game. When combined with tri emblems. Alright, let's try again. Come on, Raymond, just give me your weapon. Okay, I didn't get it. I got a gram again. So, basically, what you can do with the Philosopher's Stone with Raymond, it is RNG, unfortunately, just like all crafting in this game. But what I was going for was the Scorching Marmodos, which can only be crafted by Raymond. And it does need a Philosopher's Stone to do so. It has 6,700 attack and 4,200 intelligence. You can get that the minute you unlock Alchemy. You just have to save scum your way to do it. But again... It is expensive, so do do a fall method first. And I think that pretty much summarizes everything when it comes to item creation. Uh, when it comes to authoring, just go through every character using all of the materials available. So basically, go and buy all of the different papers from Paladinia, and then the final tier papers from... Um, Santa and Ultima Fuel. It only costs about 120,000 fall to buy 20 of every type of paper. So getting every single character to craft 20 of each type does not take that long. You just sit there mashing X while watching something on TV. And that pretty much guarantees you to get every uh, item that they can create via authoring. As you do need some of the books for turn-ins and things like that. Plus, it also goes towards the creating all item trophy. As each character does have some exclusive books that only they can create. Also, that is how you get recipes. So, for compounding and for engineering, these are the only two that recipes are used for. So, once you have a recipe, you want to go on a character. And as you are looking at the materials right here, material 1 or material 2, press square. And you can choose a recipe. And then, from here, that basically tells you what materials you need to craft these. What I will say, right, is you do not need the recipes to craft these items. You do not need the recipes. If you look there, game meat and panacea leaf, even if I didn't have this recipe, if I mixed game meat and panacea leaf, I would get the secret preparation, okay? You do not need the recipe to craft these items. What the recipe actually does is it allows you to use auto compounding. So what auto compounding is, right, is essentially, if I press R1 on these top three, okay? And that means whenever I have fresh sage and game meat, secret spice and roly poly beans, or game meat and panacea leaf, it will automatically use those materials and synthesize those items for me. Okay? So what I could do is I could use auto compounding with Raymond like that. And if we go back in, he still has them right there. I could do the same with Nina and just choose another three. So again, we can come out of that. And then I could do again with Malkia. What this means now is every compounding recipe I can make just by closing out the menu. So if I just close the menu right now, I've obviously not crafted anything, but look at the top left there. That is just mass produced all of my base level materials and turn them into items. So if I go into here right now, obviously I have no blueberries. But it's used my aqua berries, my fresh sages, and so on and so forth. It does stop, though, once the material it is synthesizing hits 20. So because of that, uh, we do still have some items. But it's just something easy that you can do when going through the game if you are using a lot of, um, you know, a lot of healing items. Thanks. 
it is something that can be helpful because it will just allow you to max out very easily. It does also make the resurrection elixir trick very, very useful while you are going through the game because they will typically auto sell, allowing you to just mass farm money while you are going through. And then last of all, we have engineering. This also has recipes, as I said. However, the recipes honestly are incredibly, incredibly bad. I do not recommend bothering with these. Like, yeah, it's a bit more extra money for you. But once you get to endgame and you start farming fall properly, I don't think it really matters personally. But again, you know, there could be there could be some people out there who actually enjoy using the items. And if so, then knock yourselves out. But it's basically the same as compounding where you just take two items and you mix them together. And that pretty much covers everything for item creation in Star Ocean The Divine Force. Uh, obviously, this video has gone on a bit now. So if I've like maybe forgotten to mention something or you have a question that I have not answered in this video, then be sure to leave a comment down below and I will do my best to get back to everybody. Like one of the things that I love doing around here is replying to comments. So if there's anything you are unsure about or you think I've not answered or I've answered poorly, then just ask down below and I will get back to you and answer the question for you. And of course, while you're doing that, make sure you hit the like button as well because likes and comments really help out the channel. And for anybody new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more content. I have still plenty more guides to come for the Divine Force, so look forward to that. As always, so everybody, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.